welcome to another exciting episode of Hank's Corner. I'm Hank Jr. I'm part of Hank Jr. Productions, where I'm documenting life's moments through photography, videography, and now podcasting. And uh, I definitely got a special guest coming on today. Uh, she's been nominated for the Alabama Music Awards Best Female Country Artist 2018 through 2021. Please welcome my special guest, Gabrielle Metz. Gabrielle, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? Oh, I'm doing wonderful. It's Friday. It's been a short week for me as far as uh, having that Independence Day holiday. Oh, it was amazing, wasn't it? The long weekend. <laughs> yeah, I definitely got to enjoy. Did you get to do anything or were you playing all weekend? No, I actually had a pretty chill weekend. Um, I came, went to my parents' house, uh, just kind of hung out. We had a We had a chill weekend. We just laid low. That's good to hear because I did see a lot of artists, I mean, having to go out and play pretty much all weekend, I guess, because, yeah. it, you know, everybody's out and about. But, uh, you know, every now and then we do need to get, get that chill weekend in. Absolutely. Well, in the last two months have been kind of crazy and just <laughs> pedal to the metal. So I, I actually it was funny week before last. I like looked at my calendar for this week and I was like, I have nothing going on. I'm going to go uh, visit my parents. So that's what I did. <laughs> okay. And when you say visit your parents, is that uh, back in Alabama? It is. Yes, sir. Okay. But you're in Nashville now, correct? That is correct. Yeah. I've been there about five years. All right. And one of the things that I learned about you, you know, I got to do the research is that uh, you were born in Fort Payne, Alabama. And I guess that's the home of the country band Alabama. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Funny enough, I was born in Alabama. Um or in Fort Payne in Alabama, and um, that is, that's kind of the home place of, of the band, Alabama, not to be confused with the state, <laughs> and right. uh, yeah, just kind of a funny connection. Yeah, so I definitely like Alabama, grew up listening to them, and my quote-unquote uh, uh, claim to fame as far as singing is concerned is I actually did get to get up on stage with Alabama. Now, I was actually up there with about 15 other kids my age, we were all, you know, <laughs> teenagers and everything, and we got to sing Cheap Seats in the background, but nevertheless, I Ooh. say that I was up on stage and sung with Alabama, but uh, obviously yeah. my, my career in music was over after that. <laughs> Well, that's a that's a pretty that's a pretty good career, if I do say so myself. Yeah, if that's if that's all I could do, that's great, and I do have a photo of that, so I can always prove it when people uh, deny that. But uh, oh, amazing! Uh, so you are, you kind of been in Nashville now for a little while, correct? Mm -hmm. A few years. How's yeah. Nashville treating you? It has been a crazy ride, but good. Um, I I knew I wanted to move to Nashville from the first time I visited when I was like 13. Um, so it was definitely always in the plan. I always wanted to, to move up at some point. And um, it worked out that I just kind of finished high school early and, and I was determined. I just made the jump. I didn't really know anybody. I didn't have a job or anything. I just kind of packed up the car and moved up there um in february of 2018 so mm -hmm. been there for a bit now um of course the last couple of years have been a little crazy as they have been for everybody um but yeah nashville's great i love the community um it was the first time that i had a community that just you said you did music and it was like oh cool awesome like that's it there was no follow-up questions there was no like crazy looks it was just like cool <laughs> so, so where you grew up that wasn't like that you're saying no oh my goodness are you kidding um i so i didn't actually grow up in in fort Payne. i was born right. there um grew up in gadsden which is about mm -hmm. 35 40 minutes south um but no you say you're doing music in gadsden especially when i was in high school and was you know i would get done with school in the afternoon and i would drive to birmingham and have band practice and have gigs and things like that um my friends were supportive but they definitely thought i was crazy um as did most people <laughs> it was just not a normal normal path to take um so you were so when you were back there i mean you you mentioned that you did after school but were you doing any gigs or anything like that because i know there's a lot of teenagers that uh, you know i've seen i had on my podcast and and usually it's the gigs that you know change the uh, people's minds about are you crazy but then when they see them out there actually on stage 
somehow they all of a sudden become supportive. But uh, was that like mm. that for you back home? Um, not really, because I I started playing gigs when I was about I don't know I guess sixteen. Um, like seriously, like really regularly playing gigs and and doing that um routinely and. It, Birmingham was kind of the closest place that you could go that had a music scene, um, which again is about another hour south of where I grew up. So it's not like it was local gigs that like m- my friends were coming to see me at. Do you know what I mean? Oh, it okay. Was like, it was separate. It was I would go to school, I would get done with school, and I would drive to Birmingham and and play or have practice. So they weren't really seeing it up close and, and personal. Um, they saw it, of course, on like social media and stuff like that. But it was still just such a foreign concept um, that they definitely were like good for you. Like I like I'm happy for you, but it was it was uh, the crazy route to take or the kind of unconventional thing to do. Okay, yeah, that's interesting <laughs> to hear because, like I said, you know, the people that I have talked with, I haven't quite heard that before, and so I can see how that would kind of you know jumpstart you to want to head to Nashville because, yeah. as you say, everybody in Nashville is all about the music. But mm-hmm. you mentioned that it it, it kind of happened, but it, it really didn't happen. Tell me, how does a uh, 16 going on 17 year old make that decision? And, and, and how do you convince your parents to let you do that? I don't know. If you figure out how I convinced them, you let me know. I'm not sure they quite know how I convinced them to do it. <laughs> um, but yeah, at 17, uh, right before my senior year of high school, um, I kind of went up to him and I was like, hey, I want to do this seriously. I want to do this as a career. And the the real kicker for me was that I was songwriting and there was nobody here to collaborate with or learn from. Um, I was just, you know, the stereotypical girl in her bedroom with a guitar. And I wasn't, you know, I was writing the best songs that I could at that age, but there was nobody to, to co-write with and learn from and get different perspectives and that was really kind of the, the, I guess, deal sealer for me um, mm-hmm. that I needed to get to Nashville because it's a town full of writers. And I was like, right. I need to learn. I need to get better. I'm not going to get better if I'm just sitting, you know, doing the same things I've always done. Because there's and only so much that you can do, correct? I mean, because I know you bought your own guitar, you know, the very first guitar, and you taught yeah. yourself to play, but... At some point, you need somebody else to help you get to that next level. And I can see why you would want to make that jump. Yeah. Well, and you just always want to be learning and and getting better at at songwriting and at music. And there was no way to do that here. Um, And so, yeah, I just went to him before my senior year. I was like, hey, I want to do this as a career and I'm serious about this. And I've always been kind of like an all in type of person. I'm either in or I'm out kind of a thing. And um so I told him, I was like, I want to do online school. I want to graduate early and I want to move to Nashville as quickly as possible. And um, my mom made me sit down and like make a plan. And she was like, OK, if you're going to do this, like I want to see a strategic plan. I want to see how you're going to accomplish this. I want to know, you know, what your plan is for the next six months, the next three years, the next five years. Like if you're going to do this, like I want you to prepare and be intentional. And I did. So <laughs> I went up to my room. About two hours later, I came down with, you know, an outline of a plan, um, which, of course, that changes sometimes. But um, I just did it. And the school, I had to go through several interviews and things like that. But they let me do online school because this was this was pre-pandemic. Online right. school was not the norm. It was very, very different, very new for sure. And um I graduated in November of 2017 and I was in Nashville by the, by Valentine's day, I actually moved on Valentine's day, 2018. So. Okay. And I know you said that the COVID years were a little tough. They were tough on everybody, but looking back, uh, do you regret anything about making that jump? No. Oh my goodness. Not at all. And I, um, You know, COVID was rough on everybody because we really had to change our approach to everything. Uh, What we had been doing was not was not going to work. And um, so it gave me time to kind of reevaluate and be like, okay, well, 
this is what I've been neglecting because I've been writing all the time and performing out all the time. And, you know, I found that I hadn't really been focusing on marketing my music. You know, mm -hmm. I was putting it out, but I wasn't marketing it. And it was, you know, not getting a ton of streams and things like that. So I really started focusing on how I was going to market my songs. And just kind of, I got to, it gave me a different perspective where I got to kind of um, take stock of every part of my music as a business and what I was doing you know, good and, and what I could improve on. So I just kind of took that time to reevaluate. <laughs> okay. And when you talk about the marketing and all that other side, did you have to teach yourself that as well? Or did you get help from somebody else to say, Hey, this is what I'm doing. It's kind of working. Or you, like I said, you just had to figure it out on your own. Yes and no. It was kind of a collaborative effort. Um, my mom was in marketing and management for years. And so she had that background, but she knows nothing about the music business. Uh, so we just kind of put our heads together and took her marketing expertise and just kind of tailored it to the music business. Okay. Well, you know, it sounds like you got a great support system there <laughs> with your parents and, and everything's kind of working out. So good for you. Um, you know, we're Thank happy you. about it. Uh, I'm definitely enjoying your, your music. And one of the songs <laughs> you said that you wanted to sing on today was forgot to fall in love. Tell me a little bit about that, uh, song yeah so this one was um it was a quick one to write it was i wrote it i had a friend who just kind of out of the blue decided that he really really liked me and i was not really on the same page unfortunately and um i was just kind of mulling over the situation one night and i was like what happens if you're in a relationship and you hit this point where you're just not on the same page and one person is like heads and tails above the other and um, just that kind of feeling of like not wanting to hurt somebody but in the end you kind of have to. And so this was a quick one. I sat down with my guitar and just kind of started writing the chorus and 20, 30 minutes later it was done. Wow. All right. And <laughs> would you mind playing it for us here on Hang's Corner today? Not at all. We're the definition of picture perfect From the outside looking in And all my single friends, they're jealous No one would dare to bet against It's hard to look at you and know that I'm not as sure as you think And you sleep peacefully beside me Well, I sing beneath the wave I'm wrestling And I could, but I shouldn't keep this to myself You fell hard and I let you fall down It hurts me to hurt you Wish that I didn't have to, but you move fast and I couldn't keep up with the pace. I hope you forgive me. Someday you thought I was the one. Well, I forgot to fall in love. It's in your eyes in every photo. It speaks before you say a thing. And there are times it overwhelms me I wish I could change the way I'm feeling And I could, but I shouldn't keep this to myself You fell hard and I let you fall down It hurts me to hurt you Wish that I didn't have to But you move fast and I couldn't keep up with the pace I hope you forgive me Someday you thought I was the one Well, I forgot to fall in love I forgot to fall in love Oh, 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 oh.
I shouldn't keep this to myself You fell hard and I let you fall down It hurts me to hurt you Wish that I didn't have to But you moved fast and I couldn't keep up with the pace I hope you forgive me Someday you thought I was the one Well I forgot to fall in love I forgot to fall in love Welcome back to Hank's Corner, where you hear the rising stars of today, and that's Gabrielle Metz, uh, and she forgot to fall in love there. And uh, <laughs> so you mentioned that that was kind of, you know, based on personal experience. Is that how you tend to write your songs? Normally, nine times out of ten, yeah. Okay. So I always wondered, you know, you know, you got guys that, you know, you know, may, maybe trying to court you and everything, and I just wondered, like, how brave do they have to be? Because, you know, every relationship you're going to have is going to end badly, except for the, uh, the, the very end one. And I mean, not necessarily too badly, but yeah. the, but the odds are that, you know, that it's not going to be the one. Aren't they worried about what you're going to write about them <laughs> when it's over? Maybe so, but oh <laughs> nobody's well. ever said anything to you about that. No, okay. no, I haven't had anybody, um, like, directly ask me about it but then again like I don't know I don't I don't date around a ton like mm -hmm. I feel like I kind of I normally am like friends with a person or know somebody for a little bit of time before I like date them typically you know like historically speaking <laughs> what I've done mm -hmm. um and everybody that I've kind of like gone out with prior has already known I was a musician or is a musician and a writer themselves. So like, okay, they have just as much right to it as I do. I was going to say, you know? so they can, they could write one of their own as well and, uh, yeah. you know, get even if they wanted to. But, uh, <laughs> so you said this one came out pretty quickly. Uh, mm -hmm. do some of them take a long time and do you have some from like years that you're still kind of like tweaking and hoping to bring out as a single one day? Um, yes and no. There are ones that I have, like, gone back and just tweaked and tweaked and tweaked for I, for extended periods of time. But I have normally found that the ones that just come naturally, that just kind of fall out and are inevitable uh, in the way that you write them, tend to be the, the really good ones. And the ones that, like, stick with people and the ones that, that people are like, oh, you should put that out. That, that needs to come out. So historically speaking the ones that are just kind of like quicker and a bit they just kind of fall out tend to be the ones that that make it make it out into the world <laughs> okay and do you ever write for anybody else other than yourself you know there was a period of time where yes i did um but i kind of felt like at least where i'm at right now and this could change in the future that when i try to write for other people just doesn't feel like it's um, authentic, I guess is the best term. I have a hard time putting myself in other people's shoes and trying to write something that they're living. Um, I just, I don't think it's the way that my brain works right now. Um, so I write a lot for like, I'll write for the purpose of like sync licensing and TV licensing, but I have a hard time like walking in the room for another artist and being like, oh, what are you looking for to like write for your album or what are you looking for to write for a single and let's write that I have a I have a hard I have a hard time no, most of the times I sit in those rights and I just stew and I'm like trying to come up with something um, so right now at least I'm just kind of either writing for me or writing for for sync licensing just and that kind of makes sense I, I understand that completely uh, do you remember the first song that you ever wrote yeah I have it in a journal in my nightstand. I have my nightstand like has kind of like a cubby hole, so like all of my journals are sitting there. Um, so yeah, I know exactly and what, which one. And what did you write about? Um, it was kind of like a road trippy song. Um, me and my best friend at the time were like, we're gonna take a road trip to California. We're gonna travel the world together one day. And so it was just kind of like a a road trip, travel, like fun kind of upbeat roll the windows down sort of song. 
Okay. Any any chance that that might make it out sometime? Oh, my dad would love that, um, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I was like 13 or 14 at the time. Mm. <laughs> yeah, a lot of the artists will say, yeah, you know, when I was 13, 14, it, 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 I've changed quite a bit and I'm not going to put that out there. Or the ones that did put it out there, they kind of said, well, we pulled it off and uh, you'll be lucky if you can find it anywhere. So, uh, but that, <laughs> but that's the thing is that uh, you, you do grow as an artist, you know, as mm -hmm. you uh, get experience and deal with other people and that sort of thing. Yeah. But you also have another song called Mass that's very interesting mm -hmm. and the way that it's written. And there's obviously a story behind that one. So mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about that one. That's your most recent song. Yeah, that one came out, um, I think like middle or end of April um, so it's been out for a few months now but yes it was kind of um, for me it was the most vulnerable song I think I've put out and um, I had the title I had the idea for like six months before I ever wrote it um, I kept walking the rights and kind of pitching it and it just wasn't the right room or it wasn't the right mood that day and I knew it could be cool I just needed to find the right people to write it with and um, I walked in the room, actually, it was a Zoom, right? It wasn't even technically in the room together, but um, this was probably, like, July, June or July of 2020, I guess. Um, and I was like, so I have this idea. And um, I was just kind of noticing in myself that I have a really hard time letting people in and kind of breaking those walls down. And originally, my thought behind it was... I'm in it kind of in a romantic sense or like a relationship sense, but it kind of evolved from there throughout the right um, to where it really kind of covers anything. It can be that kind mm -hmm. of struggle to let your friends in sometimes or your family or heck, you can apply it spiritually if you want to. It just kind of expanded as we wrote it. And um, especially in that time in 2020 where we were all having to learn how to communicate and make community when we couldn't be together. Right. And, um, and I think we're still trying to figure our way out of that, even now. So that was kind of the thought process behind it. And I kind of pitched the idea to them. And I was like, if we're going to do this, like, I need us all to just lay it out there. And we did. And those two guys that I wrote it with were amazing. And it, um, I sat on it for probably about a year. And I was like, this has to, like, I need to put this out. Every time I played it out, people just came up to me and were like, you need to put this out. This, this needs to... Um, you know, be released. And so finally did it this year. And uh, uh, congratulations. And I, and I know it's Thank doing you. well. And I think part of the reason why it's doing well, like you said, is because it does kind of resonate with everybody uh, in one way or another. You know, I think everybody has a mask of some sort, uh, whether it's you just don't reveal everything Excuse or <laughs> you're yep. fine or you know you hide behind a computer or you know there's there's, there's all kinds of things and i think that that's why uh it it just kind of touches everybody and yeah. uh would you mind playing that here on hank's corner as well no not at all All my life I've been hiding behind the same smile Wouldn't let nobody in Cause nobody's innocent And all my life I've been running from myself Cause I got all these secrets that I'm not sure I should tell I'll take off this mask for you I'll let you break down these walls Just catch me if I fall I'll take off this mask for you Answer every question That you want to ask I'll take off this mask for you For you All my life I've pushed people away And 
never thought I'd find someone who would choose to stay, but I know when I'm with you, I am safe. I want to let you in, please have a little grace, just have a little grace. To break down these walls, just catch me if I fall. I'll take off this mask for you. Answer every question that you want to ask. I'll take off this mask for you. And darling, I'll let you in when the strangers are gone When we're all alone I'll take off this mask for you I'll let you break down these walls Just catch me if I fall I'll take off this mask for you Answer every question that you want to ask. I'll take off this mask for you. For you. For you. And you just heard Gabriel Betts singing her latest uh, single, Mask. And uh, like I said, definitely a great song. So I want to ask some questions a little bit more on the uh, light side, you know, get to know a little bit more about <laughs> you. So as far as your shows, where do, where do you play some of your shows? Do you have a regular spot there in Nashville or are you just kind of all over? Yeah, kind of wherever they come and go. I normally stay a bit in the kind of midtown area of Nashville. I don't venture down to Broadway too very often. Um, but yeah, just kind of uh, riders rounds, things like that um, in Nashville. And then I play a good bit um, still down in Birmingham sporadically. I just had a gig there two weeks ago, I guess now. Um, so yeah, just those are kind of my two bases that I hit pretty regularly, but we are hopefully planning a, a bit more um, like tour dates outside for this late fall and, and into the spring. Okay. Well, if you ever decide to make it down to Florida, you just let me know so I can uh, watch that. But what, I, uh, what part of Florida are you in? So I'm actually... in Tampa. I'm in Tampa, Florida, a little further down than uh, the okay. Panhandle where a lot of people uh, tend to play. But the ones that make yeah. it down to Tampa, I'm always definitely <laughs> uh, looking forward to see that. But tell me, uh, you know, what can somebody expect from a Gabrielle Metz performance? Um, well, it does depend a little bit on the venue um, and what sure. kind of what kind of stuff we're playing. If it's my stuff, um, especially if it's full band, we have a good amount of fun. Um, if it's mostly covers, we still kind of keep it, um, I don't know, just fun and upbeat. I also, I mean, you know me, I just played one of my kind of slower songs. So I do kind of have some of those moments built in into the show. But normally just try to keep it kind of upbeat and fun and, and that kind of stuff. And as far as covers, are there any particular covers that you just love to sing out on stage? Um, I love Keith Urban. I just adore his music. Um, so my favorite cover normally to play is uh, Somebody Like You. It's okay. just upbeat, it's fun, it's got a cool little banjo part, which you can play on the guitar if you don't have a banjo with you. Um, so yeah, just kind of fun. And I'm assuming that he would be one of the artists that you would love to play up on stage with. But who are some of the other artists that, uh, you know, if you really could, the top artists that you would like to play with? I've always been a huge Carrie Underwood fan. Um, she just has a massive voice. I respect her so much. Um, so she's definitely up there. Kelsey Ballerini. Um, she kind of inspired me to start writing. So she's definitely up there. Um I don't know. Most of the artists that I would love to be on stage with, Keith is definitely one of them. But I normally, 
the, the artists that have really inspired me tend to be kind of the female side of country. So um, sure. definitely those two I just mentioned and several others. The list goes on and on. <laughs> so while you're growing up and you have these uh, people that you're admiring and, and, and you're getting to make that move to Nashville, were you ever worried about, you know, running into them? And have you read into some of your, you know, the people that you've looked up to? And how did that go? Uh, run into both of those that I just mentioned. Um, Kelsey more than Carrie. Uh, we used to live in the same neighborhood, so we would <laughs> pass each other a good amount. Um, the thing in Nashville, though, is that that's their home base. That's home for mm -hmm. them. Um, they're just another regular human being in Nashville. So it, even if you pass them, you see them in public, it's not like you're going to go up and be like, oh, my God, you're so, ins you know what I mean? Um, so you just kind of like pass them and you know if you're close enough that you're gonna say pleasantries like hi how you doing you can do that but um for the most part it'd be like passing anybody else on the sidewalk sure i get that uh so you know i've recently added you onto my playlist and, and get to listen to that what is currently on your playlist um i have a few depending on my mood um, if I, I drive a lot between, you know, gigs between Alabama and Nashville all over the place. So if it's a road trip kind of thing, it's going to be upbeat, mainly country music. Um, it's going to be Kelsey, Ka Carrie, Keith Urban, um, Brett Young, people like that. Um, just to kind of keep the car ride fun. Um, if it's like my current favorites playlist, the ones that are just like on a loop, that's going to be a bit more broad uh, genre wise. Um, that's going to hit some pop artists, some alternative rock artists as well. So it really just depends on my mood. I'm all over the place. <laughs> sure, I get that. So one of the things that I always like to ask, because I do come up to Nashville a couple times a year, <laughs> is uh, what do you recommend I eat up there? You got a favorite uh, place or anything like that that I should try? What kind of what style of food do you like though? Because I got a few. Well, I'm all about trying anything. So okay. tell me something that may be, you know, a hidden gem there in Nashville or something that's, you know, you can only find in that area. Okay. Um I I love tacos. Me and my friends love tacos. If we're going out to dinner, that's most likely what we're gonna get. So we will go to either they have similar names, but you have Taco Mama in Hillsborough Village that me and one of my friends always go to. And then you have Taco Mama Sita, which is like different style of tacos. But um, that's where me and me and some of my other friends normally go. But if we're if we're going out nine times out of ten, we're going to get tacos. Um, and there's several. You can't hardly go wrong with tacos in Nashville, though. They're all good. Okay, well, I'll definitely be looking at that because uh, I definitely <laughs> like some tacos. So before we go, though, I know you have a new song coming out called Mixtape. Yeah, and I, I was hoping that uh, you can kind of give us a little bit of a preview and uh, play that before it comes out here on Hank's Corner. I can indeed. Well, thank you. <laughs> so it's funny that you brought up playlisting and things like that because um, that's kind of what this song is about. I grew up in a very musically diverse household. Um, we listened to everything from Motown to rock to country to top 40, anything and everything. We listened to it. And so I think that really kind of influenced me as I, you know, began writing my own stuff. And I feel like you can really hear flavors of different genres thrown in there. And I walked into a write one day and I was like, I have this idea. <laughs> and, um, it was called Mixtape, and my co-writers, who were several years older than me, were like, does your generation even know what a mixtape is anymore? <laughs> and I was like, well, I know what it is. So, against uh, against their better judgment, I suppose, um, they went along with it, <laughs> and uh, now I'm putting it out, so <laughs> this is Mixtape. <laughs> Some days I'm the temptations, Papa was a rolling stone. Some days I'm Tom Petty, can't help but free falling. Some nights I'm Tim McGraw, 
Live like you would die in a JT Carolina in my mind. I'm a mixtape, unpredictable list. No rhyme or reason to what song comes next. I'm a little bit country, I'm a little bit rock and roll. Light on the R&B, but heavy on the soul. You want to rewind when I walk away. I'm a mixtape. Some nights I'm feeling queen. Another one bites the dust. Then roll right to the Bee Gees. How deep is your love? I'm living for Chicago. Hard habit to break. I'll sting you with every breath you take. I'm a mixtape, unpredictable list. No rhyme or reason to what song comes next. I'm a little bit country. I'm a little bit rock and roll, light on the R&B, but heavy on the soul. You want to rewind when I walk away. I'm a mixtape. Sweet home Alabama, sweet Caroline brings sweet emotions to this heart of mine. I'm a mixtape, unpredictable list. No rhyme or reason to what song's coming next. Some nights my love burns red, some nights like a wrecking ball, but either way I know the songs to get me through it all. I'm a mixtape, unpredictable list, no rhyme or reason to a song comes next. I'm a little bit country. I'm a little bit rock and roll, light on the R&B, but heavy on the show. You want to rewind when I walk away. I'm a mixtape. I'm a mixtape. And there you go. You get to hear it before it actually comes out. That's Gabriel Metz singing mixtape. And uh, you definitely can uh, uh, be looking for it. I'll be posting it on my New Music Friday post when that uh, gets ready to be released. Uh, be sure to check out Gabrielle on uh, social media as well as GabrielleMetz.com. So, Gabriel, I, I really appreciate you coming out and singing for me. It was it was great. And uh, uh, I definitely look forward to uh, actually get to see you in person one time. But in the <laughs> meantime, if you ever want to be a guest on Hank's Corner, you're more than welcome to. Absolutely. Well, thank you for having me. This was such a blast. I appreciate you.